Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Richard Torsos Electra, which was live from the Metropolitan Opera House. I was really excited to tune into this particular radio transmission because of the star-studded cast consisting of Christine Gerke as Elektra, Elsa van den Hever as Chrysotemis, and Michaela Schuster as Clutamnestra. I was especially excited for Madame Gerke because I have been wanting to talk about her for the longest time, and even more so, this marked Frau Schuster's Metropolitan Opera House debut. So let's not waste any time and talk about the singers right now, starting off with Christine Gerke as Elektra. I have been following this particular soprano's career ever since I first saw her as an 11 year old at the New York City Opera House singing the role of Alcina. From then on there, I grew to admire the quality and size of her voice. Much like many a dramatic soprano, she had her beginnings as a full lyric soprano with roles like Alice Ford from Verdi's Falstaff, Don Elvira from Don Giovanni, Fior de Ligi from Così Fan Tutte, and of course some of the dramatico da Gilita roles of Alcina and Norma. It wasn't until the 2000s that she started to specialize in a lot of more spintoey roles like Madame Lidouane from Le Dialogue de Carmelite, and even Chrysotemis from, of course, Electra. Cut to the late 2000s, early 2010s, in which her voice headed into a new direction, and that was the Hochdramatische Sopran route, where she sang roles like Ortrud, Kundry, Sieglinde, and even her first Electra and Brunhilde, thus branding herself as a true dramatic soprano. And I have been wanting to hear a true Wagnerian soprano singing roles like Elektra or Brunhilde or even that of Isolde. And I have been wanting to hear her sing this role for the longest time, ever since she made the transition from Chrysotemis to Electra, I was at first fearful for her, given the fact that she did spend the first half of her career as a sort of spinto soprano, which was where I initially thought her voice was going to go. However, I was pleasantly surprised that her voice ended up going to the more Wagnerian soprano route. And when I heard her sing Elektra, I was completely in awe in terms of everything she had to accomplish as a consummate singing actress. First of all, she has this plush, full-toned, and rich voice which has made her stand out exceptionally, and I have admired the quality of her voice ever since I first heard her as an 11-year-old boy, and as I heard her voice grow and grow, I grew to be completely enamored with everything she had to offer. This was definitely a versatile singing actress who gave the goods in terms of not only throwing herself into this particularly iconic role, but also backing it all up with a lot of diligence, strength, and determination to make her stand out out so well. She was able to sing a lot of her notes to such great accuracy, and I'm especially a big fan of her high notes, whether it be her cutting high C's or even that of her full and rich B flats and B's. I can never go wrong with her. She knew how to cut such an amazing impression in this iconic Richard Strauss heroine that I was in complete and utter awe of everything she did. She was able to not only sing her opening monologue, Allein, wie ganz allein, with such pathos, anguish, and tragedy, but she also sang the recognition scene with a fine amount of lyricism and class, thus proving herself to be so invested in this particular role. And I, as the listener, was certainly grateful 
for everything Madame Gurky had to offer. So to Christine Gurky, brava to you in terms of your great accomplishments as this iconic yet challenging dramatic heroine. You did an amazing job in terms of making this role come to life. And for that, I salute you. Elsa van den Hever was an equally strong and steely Chrysotemis with her trademark Spinto soprano voice and of course her great musicality she knew how to make this role come to life with all of her feminine charms and of course great floating lines which she was able to produce so magnificently. She was able to bring in so much vigor and charisma into this particular role that I was completely involved in terms of everything she had to accomplish as a singing actress. And of course, her vocal chemistry with Christine Gerke's Electra was completely palpable. Their voices not only blended superbly, but they were also distinguishable. What with Christine Gerke's fuller, steelier, and richer tones being put to great use as Electra, and Elsa van den Hever's equally steely, yet equally gorgeous Spinto soprano voice, being put to excellent use as Chrysotemis. And as a standalone singer, Elsa van den Hever continues to be as alluring and absolutely gorgeous as she's always been. Making her Metropolitan Opera House debut was the mellifluous and equally dramatic Frau Michaela Schuster, who definitely threw herself into the role of Clytemnestra effectively. She was able to bring in so much anguish, so much angst, so much turmoil, and so much guilt into this particular character that everything she did as a singing actress shows with flying colors. She was able to bring out so many unpleasant facets and a lot of great drama, which made this particular Richard Strauss anti-heroine all the more involving and all the more multidimensional. And of course, her gifts as a singing actress were absolutely unparalleled. There is no one like her who could be able to accomplish so much with this role. And for that, Frau Michaela Schuster deserves not only a great amount of kudos, but also lots of salutes in terms of her unparalleled efforts and, of course, her great mastery as a singing actress. She was not only terrifying in terms of how she was able to produce her voice, but she was also moving in certain areas, so much so to the point where I actually feel for her plight. Mikhail Petrenko was a solid Orest. Yes, I would have loved to have a slightly fuller and richer voice, evidenced in voices like Peo Adam or even that of Samuel Ramey, but I digress. Mikhail Petrenko managed to bring in a fine amount of nobility and charm to Ores. Even though his voice did tend to be slightly on the hollow side, I still have to give him a fine amount of credit in terms of embodying this particular character. He was able to make him quite mysterious, yet also alluring, and it was all thanks to his focused bass baritone voice. J. Hunter Morris was a masculine, handsome, and quite villainous Aegist, and I've also been following this particular Helen Tenno's career for quite some time, as he has been very well known in roles like Siegfried from the Ring Tetralogy and many other superb Helden Tenois roles. However, I always affiliate him with Siegfried because it seems to be one of those roles that Mr. Morris has been performing internationally. Hearing Mr. Morris was not only a great treat, but it was certainly wonderful to hear a Helden Tenois making the best out of this small yet thankless character part. 
and he really knew how to embody this role with not only menace but also a fair amount of cowardice so much so that you can't help but cheer when you get to see that a gist ends up kicking the bucket all thanks to Orest stabbing him to death. And for that, I salute J. Hunter Morris for everything he did as a gist. We also had such magnificent singing to be found in James Courtney's round, rich, and robust old servant, Kevin Short's noble, dignified, and handsome tutor, Scott Scully's characterful young servant, even though his tone did tend to be a little bit flat in some areas, Susan Neves, powerful and domineering overseer, Tachina Vaughn's robust and gorgeous first maid, Maya Rajani's youthful and agitated second maid, Andrea Hill's fine third maid, Kelly K. Hogan's mighty fourth maid, and Lisa Daltiris's gorgeous and moving fifth maid. So overall, the singing was absolutely amazing. With Christine Gerke, Elsa van den Hever, and Michaela Schuster being the absolute standouts in this cavalcade of stars. These three exceptional women managed to make the greatest use of not only their vocal talents, but also their acting prowess to make the characters of Electra, Chrysotemis, and Clytemnestra come alive. And the conducting done by Yannick Nézé Segon was solid all the way through. He led the orchestra masterfully, and the same thing I can say about the chorus. And of course, the chorus and orchestra of the Metropolitan Opera House were, as always, excellent all the way through. So overall, with such great singing to be found, headed by Christine Gerke, Elsa van den Hever, and Michaela Schuster, this reader transmission of Richard Strauss' Elektra was not only a great treat, but it was definitely a wonderful trip which I will never forget. And for those of you who listen to this particular radio transmission of Richard Strauss's Elektra live from the Metropolitan Opera House, what'd you think of it? Did you feel like Christine Gerke stole the show as the titular heroine? Or did you even feel like Elsa van den Hever or Michaela Schuster stole her thunder? Was there another singer you really loved that kind of stole Christine Gerke's Elsa van den Hever's or Michaela Schuster's Thunders? Or did you feel like there was someone from the cast that just didn't really hold up? Comment below and let me know. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for my review of Verdi's Aida live from the Kungliga Opera. So until then, good night everybody.